What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 35, you know what time it is, it's sloggy season, yep, just got done with a transfer window in the last episode, uh, of course winning two of our first three games and today I'm going to try and get through all of these games here which include our first game in the EFL Cup as we enter big games in the Premier League and the first half of our Champions League group stage starting with I uh, Rangers away at Ibrox, big game to kick off as well, uh, top two in the league last year, Man City we pitched the title at home as you try and make it three wins in a row and three wins in our first four games in the league. Big game to start off with. Come on, Liverpool. I think Liverpool versus Man City has to be my favourite kind of like developing rivalry in, in the Premier League right now as KDB is denied from Alisson. Um, it's just, like, it's a neutral. The games are just so fun to watch. And I often say the mutual respect that Klopp and Guardiola have for one another. Oh, as Robertson gets it off... How did Allison just do... Oh, no, a second. Let me concentrate here. How did Allison just do that? Robertson just cleared it off the line. It would go to goal on the decision, but it was clearly off the line in time. But Allison, he just... He just, like, kicked it off the line when he was on the floor. How did... I just want to... That's incredible. <laughs> He's using the net. He's holding onto the net for, for grip. And then he kicks it off, this back spinning in. That's that's incredible, man. Well, we know this guy's good with his feet, but that's unbelievable. Sorry, the point I was making in the first half is that the, the rivalry between these two, the way it's developed over the years, has been absolutely classed as a neutral. They're always two of my favourite games in the Premier League season now, in this Klopp and Guardiola era. Um, but my, my games against Man City is... Oh, it's a good block there by Carwell. Um, they, they never seem to be quite as good, you know, unfortunately. I can't seem to replicate the, the intensity within my saves, you know. And oftentimes they finish as a drab, goalless draw. Or one team just runs out comfortable winners. It's very rarely a game which I can match the intensity of, you know. Hopefully. Oh, surely! Yes! We get a massive win here. Jack Clark, what a star for the eggs, Cherry. I think that is four goals in as many games for the eggs, Cherry, Black Cat, Spurs and Leeds, man. And as things stand, this is going to be a massive win. It'll be Man City's first loss of the season. And it'll mean we have three wins in a row. Jeremy Docky, what a, oh, what a goal. What, oh, do you know what? Fair play. Maybe you could say I could have been a little bit stronger in the tackle and a bit better in the positional sense here. But the way he splits Andy Robertson and then Levi Colwood as well. That is tremendous footwork. As we know, this guy has got it in abundance. What a class player he is when he's showcasing that skill with the dribble. All right, 1-1. One, one. And what else me saying these games normally aren't that good for me. This one... Hold on. the exception, Yunus Musa, the American, what a game. This is it for the visitors, Jules coming forward, needs to keep going forward, otherwise the referee will surely call time, Curtis Jones is there, is that going to be enough, whistles around Anfield, the crowd want the full time whistle to come, and there it is, there it is, massive win, I say I can't seem to replicate the intensity, like we see in real life, this game had it. This game had it started strong early with a massive stop by Allison on the line and then three goals in 13 minutes. Two for us, one for the visitors, and we run out 2-1 winners. Massive, massive three points in this season. That's a huge win. Already just four games in. And that is how you want to start off sloggy season, man. What a win. Right, following game, let's keep the momentum going. Leicester away at the King Power going for our fourth straight win in the Premier League. Come on, Liverpool. Diaz to Musa. Just scored the game when he gets City. And now finds Cody Gakpo, who finally is off the mark. Is that his, I think that's his first goal for the season for Cody Gakpo. Or possibly second, but slow start in terms of putting the ball in the back in the net. But there is the goal to give us the lead here at the King Power. He's, he, listen, he still justifies that massive contract extension after the last year winning the player of the season. Based on this start, though, I'm not sure he's going to get the chance to do it again. So that's ball, but I think... Oh, no, 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 no. 
Oh, I thought Kanata was going to get there, didn't. And Melvin Bard goes in to make it 1-1. Uh, well, to start this season off, admittedly, I've leaked a few cheap goals. Melvin Bard is such a great young wing-back in this year's game. Good French defender with excellent tackling ability. Very hard to get past, but also Kalsan going forward as well. Speaking of, Cody Gakpo. What a touch. Cody. Oh, what a save that is. Phenomenal fingertips stop the keeper at 1-1. As Cody looks to single-handedly win us these points away at the King Power. Still 1-1. Looks like we're set for our second draw from a leading position this season. If you want to win the title, you've got to close out your wins. Especially in games we expect to get them, whether home or away. Mackenzie's done well there. And we might get one chance. Everett, Ever keep running, keep running, keep running. I need you. Down this right. Felix. Oh, I don't know where I'm going. Oh, man. No, 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 no. Spanning around in a circle. And I probably should have just pressed circle and tried to get a shot on target. Second game already this season, I've been leading and failed to close out the three points. That is not how you close out a title as well. Right, here we go. And man, am I excited for this one. Rangers away at Ibrox. I said before how happy I am that Ibrox and Celtic Park are now in FC. And taking them on away in Glasgow. Our first game in the Champions League in the entire save with Liverpool back in the big time. Let's start off with the three points in Scotland. Come on, Liverpool. Yeah, you heard my excitement in the last episode when the group was drawn because there is something about facing Rangers and Celtic in, in the Champions League that I just find so cool. I can't I can't tell you what it is. Well, in Europe in, in, in general, it doesn't have to be Champions League, but just Europe in general, there's something about it. I just absolutely love it. Uh, when I was a kid, I went to Ibrox a few times. My uncle was a Rangers fan. I've been to watch them play in a, a cup final at Hamden as well. And... Yeah, it's just so fun. It's, oh, Jack Butland denies Stefan his first goal since returning to Liverpool. Excellent start, though. There's a look for that opener, and we're still searching. Free kick Rangers right on the edge of our area here as the host to get themselves a, uh, I'd say, a surprise early lead, if you will. Not a shock, but a surprise. It's Scott Olsen, who we know has great technical ability. He's going to stand over it. Gets it over the wall, and Allison. Just about palms it away. Always like to have a man on the line, but sometimes I feel as though it might be detrimental if you get in the keeper's way. Thankfully, Addison just charges for everyone when he's after a ball. Just ask West Bromwich Albion when he was going to uh, score that goal from the corner and join that elite group of goalkeepers that scored uh, in the Premier League. Anyway, still no no, and uh, a close call there as the hosts almost got themselves in front. Goalkeeper goals will uh, will always have a special place in my heart as a former goalkeeper myself. Always wanted to score one, but their main job is to stop the ball hitting the back of the net. Unfortunately, in this occasion, Allison couldn't provide the heroics again. Yanis Haji, son of a legend, gives Rangers the lead. And like I said, I wouldn't call this a shock because their team is actually pretty solid. But it would still be a disappointing return to Champions League football if we were to lose on the opening game away in Glasgow. Down by one, got to respond. Yeah, for those of you who may be a little bit younger. Oh, as Allison makes a great save on Nicholas Raskin. Yanis Haji's father, George, Romania's top scorer ever, I believe. One of their most capped players ever. And uh, played for both Real Madrid and Barcelona back in the 1990s. Excellent, excellent forward. Uh, might have been slightly before my time, but I certainly watched a lot of footage of his. As Allison once again keeps us only down by a goal. This this has been poor for me. I had the early chance, but since then I've just not been up for it. This is not gonna cut it. And I'll say this all the time, man. It's a it's a phrase, one of my favourites. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. I have just not been on it in this one. Yeah, I've just not played well out there in this game and Rangers have been up for it and we haven't as Raskin scores an absolute beauty. And it's 2-0. And this is it, man. This is it. A team that's motivated and plays with intensity, plays with heart, I always say I'd fancy them over a technically better team that just don't put the shift in. It is that famous old saying, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. I ain't been on it. I have not been on it. And it's going to be a dismal return to Champions League football. Clark, down the right. Can we get a glimmer of hope here? Well held up, Ben Doak. Come on. 
Everett A drills past Butler and it's 2-1. Instant response. We're still down by one. We'll add that. We'll add that. We'll in, Pedro. And, oh, Ben. Duke. And I see a man at the far post. Going to get it across to him. Oh, just shoot, Doxy boy. Come on. So he starts to overthink things, you know, when you're not playing very well. Just shoot. See Andy there. He's got space to go himself and... Butlin watched it every step of the way. Probably should have held on to it, really. 22 minutes to go. Plenty of time, but... Oh, Butland again. Still behind as we try and claw ourselves back to claim a point in the group over to Butland again. Jack Brickwall Butland. We're going all out here. And is there going to be a little bit of Mo Magic left in the tank? In his retirement year, 17 minutes to go. Can he provide the heroics for us, even in his declining years? As he gets up for that, and it's headed away. And Doak. Oh, what a goal! Ben Doak with an absolute beauty. Liverpool from 2-0 down get themselves a point. Well, you know, an ex-Celtic boy is going to love scoring at Ibrox, whether he still wears the green or not. And whilst it is still technically two points dropped, considering we were 2-0 down, I guess you just got to take it. Back-to-back -back draws, no wins in our last two, and kicking off the CL group with just a point. All things considered, though, what could have been, I guess you just got to be satisfied enough with a battle back to claim something, if not all three points. And here's something interesting before we dive into the following game. Ibrahim Akwanate, that game against Rangers he was suspended for. And if you remember last season, that was the problem why Akwanate couldn't regain his fitness. The bug meant uh, that suspension wouldn't clear his energy problem. So now that that suspension has been uh, um, played through, if you will, uh, it should mean now that we won't have a problem with Ibrahim Akwanate's injury level. So last season, unfortunately, can replay him. This season, Season, that shouldn't now be a problem. Anyway, uh, following game, Newcastle at home. No wins in our last two. Aiming to bounce back here at Anfield and get a massive three points as we return to Liverpool and possibly go top of the table. Come on, Liverpool. Three great games to start today's episode off with. Boy, into the middle. Cut out by Curtis Jones. There's Musa. Flicks it over his head and flicks on to Trent. Keep running, Eunice. And now Andy, keep running. And now inside. Excellently done. What a build-up. What a goal. What a wonderful goal that is as Curtis Jones fires in another. He's off to a brilliant start this season. And an ad from Tox Steph wraps up a lovely passing move. No, 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 no. Oh, for goodness sake. My defense at the moment is just absolutely trash, man. Like, seriously. Just awful to start the season. We had the, we had the best defensive record in the division last year. Not going to have it again based on this start. This is poor from me. It's, it's funny though. Like I often, I often say how like for me it's like I, I, I can't do both things at once. It's like I either, I'm either really good in front of goal. But I concede a lot. As Eunice Musa restores the lead. Or I'm super tight defensively. But I don't score a lot of goals. You know this season it seems though it's going to be the former. But for Musa that's his I think third goal now of the season. He's having a great little spell here in the absence of camera. Yeah, that is one of the reasons why we are starting to struggle a bit defensively now. That injury to Bubakar. I see this last season but like this is something that I wish EA would look into like DMs are criminally undervalued in, in FC like in terms of like their, their stats and their average rating they never seem to get a very good one but oh great type of Trent and hold on the, the problem is is because like it's it's a game where it favours the, the offensive players and so Jack Clark's got to score and does. You know, an ex Sunderland lad's going to love scoring against Newcastle. It means that DMs are criminally undervalued, man. Last season, we only conceded like just over 20 goals, I think it was. And one of the big reasons was because Camera was fantastic at protecting the back line. Now he's gone down for three months. Well, you can, you can see, you can feel the effect with him no longer on the pitch, man. Even so, if you can't defend, just score more. Football 101. I'm not sure you're going to be able to squeeze in all the games we want to play today because the first four have been fantastic. Another good one. 3 1 victory, though, and a return to winning ways. Much needed victory at Anfield. But let's do what we can. Uh, next up, Huddersfield Town away as we take on the Challenger side in Yorkshire in the EFL Cup third round. Bottled this competition last year. This season, want to try and make Wembley. Come on, Liverpool. Yeah, the further I go in this competition, the more seriously I take it. 
So that's why my lineup tonight is a bit of a strange one, including Salah at CM. I need to say the older he gets, the deeper he'll play in this team. <laughs> at some point, he'll be a centre-half. You know, <laughs> you know, I want to convert everyone to a ball-playing defender at some point in their careers. Mo Salah, you are no exception, mate. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, still 0-0, but the Terry's looking for that opening goal. And they might well get it, as my defence continues to look absolutely fragile. I'd say it like a hot knife through butter. It's more like any knife through milk. I mean, this is just embarrassing. I cannot defend to save my life. When was the last time I had a clean sheet? Correcti. See Felix. I see Ben trying to run through the middle. Couldn't get it to him. It's well held up by our number nine. Oh, brilliantly done. Excellent balance there. And the pass back was poor. It's hard to see the clear. Once it, I'm just not on it. Like, even after that win against Newcastle, I'm just not on it. Granted, I've got a backup side out there. But even so, like, just, I don't I don't know what it is, man. I'm just not feeling it right now. But in cup football, you don't get more chances than the one. Mo still has some magic in him. Hits it off both posts to give us the leveler. Part of Utrecht from the magician. Uh, he's going to do it, I think. Well, can we get one last chance here? Felix holds it up really well. This might be our final chance. He says, Ben, off you go. Eberechi just couldn't offload in time, and the Terriers will survive that last attack. Penalty shootout, it is. I can't seem to avoid pens in this save, man. I swear we have like two or three spot kick battles a season. We've got our second already this year after we won the Community Shield on penalties. Yeah, I might have won that, but every time I go into a shootout, I never feel confident. Same with this one here. Just out of self-belief, what can I say? As Radilovic sends Kelleher the wrong way. And the Terriers are off to the races early. Samuel Suarez is sent the wrong way by Eberechi. And we found our leveler from the spot kicks. Rudoni. Oh, cheeky. Right down the middle as it's 2-1. Now, Felix Athena Jean. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. Yes, there we go. 2-2. Two -two. Right down the middle from Karoma as well. And Mo Salah, who scored our leveler. With a trademark run up. Oh, top beans. Like I said, his legs have gone, but he can still use that technical ability of his. Oh, Kelleher, what it, mate? And now Archie Gray, first appearance from Liverpool, I believe. Gives us the lead to make it 4-3, and that means we're on the brink. If Kelleher makes the save here, we are heading into the fourth round, and maybe the tie is starting to turn for penalty shootouts with Liverpool. Coming Kelleher with the save. Two in a row. Like I said, man, he's got a tremendous record. And he's just extended it. Liverpool are through. Now we should see who we've got in the following round directly afterwards. As once again, Kelleher provides some magic in the EFL Cup. And we'll be taking on in the fourth round. Oh, well, tough one. Newcastle away at St. James's in the last 16. Yeah, not sure I'll be able to do all the games today as planned. Let's do a few more at least. Following game, West Ham away in London. Come on, Liverpool. It's always such a good feeling when I win a penalty shootout against whoever, you know, because like I just I feel like I'm terrible at them. I really do. And also we lost two in a row last year in the oh what a finish, Curtis Jones, uh, Carabao Cup and FA Cup semis. So whilst these two might not have the most significance, a Community Shield and an EFL Cup third round, it's still nice with them. Anyway, Curtis, he's on fire. Absolute fire, man. That's two goals in two league games. I think four for the season already. Man, he's balling this year. Okay, it's a lovely turn. Gets over the halfway line and says, just let me go. I'll run this myself. Clark, great ball. He's on side, Cody. Great save by Nathan Trott. Interesting fact about Nathan Trott, the goalkeeper of West Ham today. He can represent Bermuda if he wants to do so. He's a young goalkeeper, and I'd love to see it as he's beaten there by Jack Clark. I talk about this a lot, but like when players have like a dual nationality, there's a lot of English players that have dual nationality with Jamaica, for example. I often say, why not? Like seriously, why not go and play for that country on the international stage? I would say this all the time. The possibility of never getting called up for England or becoming a hero 
for it for a nation like again B Bermuda, for example. I mean that that's that's more in my opinion that's far more appealing. If you could get like you know Bermuda to <laughs> World Cup, imagine. Of course, highly unlikely, but even so, even so. Anyway, tune it up. Jack Clark's 50 year already. He is on fire. Uh, it seems as though already right before the break, these points are going to be in the bag. And Liverpool finally starting to pick their form up. I mean, you've got to realise that the World Cup is going to get expanded. So there's, there's more nations with chances to qualify. Why not? Like, you know, seriously, why why not, man? I, uh, I, I would say I would take that over probably never getting a call-up for England. And certainly never getting a cap for England. Any day of the week. If someone said I've got some Gibraltar heritage, for example, I'd say lace up those boots and get me on the plane over. Because I'd love to play and get some caps on the international stage and possibly write myself into folklore for that country as well Anyway, Cody Gakpo, slow start in terms of goal scoring but he's got another Liverpool 3 and up, points in the bag and there we go, comfortable 3 and a win and don't want to jinx it but finally we seem to be getting our form sorted first clean sheet in a while as well, really needed that yeah, still at least a couple more games today and try and keep this good run of form going. Next up, Juventus at home at Anfield in our first Champions League game here in Liverpool in match day two of the group. Need to get our first win, not before long. Let's try and get it here against the Italian Giants. Come on, Liverpool. And win that, win that one in. And a good ball too. And oh, Jones to Gapo. It's got to be 1-0. Oh, well, there we go. Luis Diaz gets, I think, his second of the season. And the opener as well. Cody could have finished himself, but granted, I don't score that many goals or I haven't this season so far, but it's the assist man. He's top of the assist charts in the league right now. And of course, he won the assist title last year. That's the thing in this Liverpool team. You've got to remember that spearhead in Liverpool's front three isn't just there to put the ball in the back of the net, but to set them up and be just as creative as well. Cody Gakpo is perfect for that role for me because, again, he, he, he doesn't score as many as some strikers could, but it's his assists that make him such a key player in our front three. Liverpool in front, Diaz with the opener. But the man who gets the assist, yep, no shocks, Cody Gakpo. I have to say that was a pretty awful game. But you know what? A win is a win. And we'll take it first in the Champions League with a 1-0 win over the old lady. And four points taken from six. Let's kick on from here now. Come on. Well, let's try and squeeze in at least a couple more games today, if not three or four. Following games, staying at home, but back to the Premier League. Brighton, Roberto De Zerbi's side coming to take on at Anfield. Let's get it run going. Come on, Liverpool. Obviously beat... Ooh. Play advantage, please, ref. Obviously beat them in. And now Diaz go left. Uh, right, sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Keep running, Jack. There we go. Really well played that. Obviously beat Brian in the Community Shield last year's FA Cup winners. And he's getting another big win against them here in the league. And keep this good reform going. Okay, this, this is this is more like it. This this is more like it. Back to back clean sheets. We do get a win here. And you count the Huddersfield penalty shootout victory as well. That'll be four in a row in all competitions. This this is more like it. Mini, mini struggle patch, but much better, much better. That's a lovely ball that, and McKenzie gets onto it, and can he wrap it up? Oh, just wide the post, and that is going to do it. Just like the Juve game, not really much going on to me. I scored early, but didn't really do much after that. But hey, I'll take it. It's three clean sheets in a row, and the winning run continues. Much needed stability, and it adds to the form book. Go on, let's squeeze in two more today, shall we? Yeah. Following game, penultimate one today. Uh, Brentford away in West London at the G Tech, aiming to stay top of the table and undefeated. Come on, Liverpool. I've always wondered whether, like, having a view of a football pitch, like a professional team stadium football pitch, um, add to like a property value. So if you look at a GTEC, you might you might notice this if you've seen uh, the shots of it. Uh, there's there's flats that are right next to it because it's you know it's London, so obviously it's going to be flats everywhere. Um, but there's there's flats right next to it, and, and and some of them have views, unobstructed views into the GTEC itself. And I've always wondered, does that drive property values up, especially? If the team, like Brentford is in this example, are playing Premier League football as well, like let's say hypothetically Brentford got into Europe, would that would that increase the value? Because you've got a season ticket to Premier League and again possibly European football as well. You know, when I was a kid, that was like a dream of mine. I used to dream of possibly being able to own a place where you could literally overlook a football stadium and you could sit out on the balcony, have your dinner. And, uh, and watch again like a Premier League game or a Champions League game. Can you imagine? I've always wondered whether that's the case or not. I should, I should really look into that as Jack Clark is denied. That would be fascinating if so. If Brentford's rise to Premier League has seen those flats rise in value. Yeah, 
yeah, something tells me I'm never going to be able to afford one of those flats next to the GTEC in my lifetime. And I don't think I'll be able to afford a home period in my lifetime <laughs> based on the, uh, the obscene property prices in the UK right now. It's unbelievable. Um, anyway, Diaz heads on. There's Clark. And dinks it to Luis. And what a chance here for the opener. It's the Colombian. It's a good save by Flecken. But really, either side of him, it's probably 1-0. Made it simple for him. You, you taught this a lot, man, but make the keeper work. You know, don't put it straight at him. Either side, towards a corner, right down his throat, is always going to be an easy stop. Should have opened the score in there. That's poor from me. That's the free ball. Oh, what a ball. What a ball. Victor Boniface. Oh, Grace of Allison with the rebound turned in. And there is the end of our clean sheet streak. Good stop, but the rebound converted from close range. Nothing Allison could do about that. Always so misfortunate when your keeper bails you out of a good stop. But who does it fall to? The attacker running in. That's why you're always taught this. Follow your misses. Down by a goal. And our clean sheet streak is gone. And our winning streak is probably going to come to an end as well. Oh, as Cody Kakpo seems to mishit it a little bit. Trent with the tackle, he's had one last chance. Felix, great ball. Carvalho, oh my goodness gracious me, that is an awful finish. I mean, literally, I mean, I said this in the first half, you can't just put it straight at the keeper and expect to score, not at this level. What an absolute bottle. I don't know how I didn't win that game, but instead, I didn't get a point. First loss of the season, I'm not ending on that. That is woeful for me, absolutely woeful. The finishing there was terrible. Not ending on that. We're playing one more. Yeah, we'll do one more game today. Our final one. Slavia Prague. Match day three of the Champions League group stage. Win this. And I'd feel confident at the halfway stage of making it through. But failed to win this. And it blows the group wide open. Big game to end on in the Czech Republic. Come on, Liverpool. Don't forget, obviously, in Europe. Oh, well in Stefan. Oh, it's got to be one now. Felix is on to that. Surely. There we go. There's the opener. Even under pressure. Because it goes head-to-head -head in the European group stage, I always say, if you can win your first three... It means that you've got a better head-to-head -head record than obviously all three of your opponents. And that means that going out from there with nine points taken from nine, it's going to require a heck of a choke. So, you know, that, that's the key, really. Make sure you avoid defeat and, well, primarily, hopefully, win all of your first three. And then you've already, I wouldn't say got one foot in the knockout stages, but you've certainly got a pinky toe in there. Cheers, Jack Willing, mate. And, oh, well played. Oh, hang on. Whoa, whoa. Man's on the floor. Man's on the floor. Man down. Man down. Got to, got to use that to your advantage, man. Whenever you see that, push it. Push that pace. Because you ain't going to recover on time. And Felix. Oh. Should have got his second. Yindrik Stanek makes the stop and keeps Slavia Prague still only down by one. That, that should have been two there. Let's see. Uh, former Everton Academy grad. Oh. Watches that sail just over his head. Actually, was he an Everton Academy grad? Or did he just join at a young age? I don't know. Everton fans, you can correct me. There's Jack Clark. Oh, belt it past him. Whether Everton Academy grad or not, you could have Tim Howard in goal for that one as well. And he's still getting nowhere near it. What a scorcher by Clark. And we're tuning up before the break. That is a heck of a strike. Well, it's always disappointing when you have your first loss of the season. But when it happens, you just got to pick yourself up, move straight on, and put it right in the next one. We do that with a 2-0 win in Prague. And it means at the halfway stage in the group. Seven points taken from a possible nine. Free clear of Juve and Rangers as well. And certainly feeling confident of progressing through to the knockout stages. But that'll do it for today's episode of the Realistic Crimmer, guys. So big thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you had, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I'll return in the next episode with probably two, if not all three, of our remaining Champions League group games. The EFL Cup last 16 away at St. James's against Newcastle and more big games in the Premier League aimed to stay top of the table in our title defence season very soon.